Hello, sir. You standing in for me? Thank you. You're cute. Are you going to be in the video too? Yeah. Maybe. Think about it. Okay, well I should probably get ready so I can film it, but you're very cute. Hello everyone. Welcome to my living room. This is my new desk chair. It doesn't usually sit in the living room, but it felt appropriate for this episode because I needed some room for activities. Anyway, um, wait one second. One second. Hi guys. Um, at this point, it's kind of awkward and I never know how to um, intro these because it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't seen you in like six months. But um, at least this topic feels appropriate for why I've been gone, which shocking. If you've been watching me for a while, um, you'll already have assumed it was probably back related, which yes, mostly, but also I have been working on something else and I'll fill you guys in a little bit later. But before we dive into all the back tools that um, actually make my life bearable from day to day, uh, a word from our sponsor. Thank God. Today's video is sponsored by Green Chef. If you're unfamiliar, Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that makes eating well, easy, and affordable with plans to fit every kind of lifestyle, including vegan, vegetarian, paleo, and keto. And if you change your mind, you can switch up your meal plan whenever you're ready to try a new way to eat. And if you're like me, you can rejoice in not having to go to the grocery store. Let Green Chef do the meal planning, grocery shopping, and most of the prep for you week after week. Recipes include pre-made measured sauces, dressings, and spices so you can get more flavor and less time. And with Green Chef's wide variety of high quality clean ingredients, you can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. This includes organic, non-GMO, sustainably sourced produce. And also, Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit, offsetting 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box. The best part, in my opinion, is that the ingredients come pre-measured, perfectly proportioned, and mostly prepped. Because if you're like me, you go to the grocery store and you buy way too much food and then it mostly goes to waste. That doesn't happen anymore. Today I'm making some cheesy Italian meatloaves, something I never would have even known existed, much less would have chosen to make, but oh my God, they were so good and that's definitely a recipe I'll be holding on to. So what are you waiting for? Go to greenchef.us slash lilymarston100 and use code lilymarston100 to get $100 off, including free shipping on your first box. Okay, so here's the story. A lot of you probably know, um, I've been dealing with chronic back pain for like three years now. Almost four years? Shit. <laughs> anyway, um, it's awful, but it has improved quite a bit and it's definitely much more manageable than it used to be. As for what happened to it, I don't have like one answer. My chiropractor had suggested it was a childhood tailbone injury, which very likely I used to horseback ride and I may or may not have fallen off once and landed on my butt on um, concrete. So it feels like that maybe could have been a contributor. But um, PS, if you've already heard all of this, uh, I'll make it quick. So basically that combined with just bad posture, which honestly I think stems a lot from the childhood tailbone injury. I spent my whole life with everyone being like, sit up straight. I couldn't. And then I got all the adjustments done and I'm like, oh, this, this is what it's like to stand. I remember the first time I got into my car and it was like not uncomfortable and I was like, is this why they make chairs like this? I know that sounds extreme and like, you, you're exaggerating. No, I swear to God, I just didn't, I thought chairs were just made to be uncomfortable. I thought it was uncomfortable for everyone. And, and it wasn't even that they were uncomfortable. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. Even though I feel like I have made a lot of progress, um, chairs still aren't always the best. So I did buy this new one that I'm sitting on, which I'll show you in a second. Other than that, bad posture, and then what triggered everything was getting into a car accident. Um, 2019? No, 20, 2018? When did I leave Clever? 2018. Whenever I left Clever, we got into a car accident and it wasn't that bad, but you know how it, even the ones that aren't that bad, then it's like a month later and you're like, oh my God, what happened? This happened. So I feel like that was just like the straw that broke the camel's back. I'm the camel in this scenario. Yeah, it's been a rough few years. I uh, just kind of wallowed in pain and I went to a few doctors and they really didn't give me any assistance whatsoever for the first few months. And then I found this chiropractor, Dr. Rahim, and he basically just changed my life. The, the first adjustment, which PS, all this started for me with neck pain. It was like burning sensations and like horrible things. And I had basically like a bone like sticking out. It's not there anymore. But so I started going to the chiropractor and he didn't adjust my neck. He only started adjusting my lower back because he had done the x-ray. 
and seen that it wasn't a neck problem. Well, it was a neck problem, but the neck problem was being caused by a lower back problem, which no one else had even looked at. So here's my first piece of advice is if anyone out there has like mysterious neck pain, I used to get muscle spasms like once every two months. Highly recommend looking into your lower back because wow, life changer. The first adjustment he gave me was like, like here-ish, like right above my sacrum area. You guys, I had never been able to touch my toes. Like it was just like my hands just kind of like hung there. I could now palm the ground without stretching. I would do it right now, but I it, too much work to move everything. I could suddenly palm the ground. It went from my butt being tucked under to suddenly it was just like, oh, what? <laughs> this is how all of you live? And then I realized that, that was also the cause of my thigh chafing, which was always a big problem for me. If you guys ever watch my Coachella vlogs uh, for Clever back in the day, it was a big problem. Turns out that's because um, my body wasn't aligned the way it was supposed to be. But um, yeah. So anyway, um, I went to the chiropractor for like a year and a half and he basically adjusted me starting, it was like three times a week and then eventually we got to like once a month and then eventually, eventually to be honest, I can adjust the things that he does and I'm sure he would roll his eyes at that. But I, my problem now is that I'm hypermobile, so now it's so easy to move things that I, I'm like, oh, feels like this should be over here. I can literally like pull and push things and it just like pops into place, which is great because I can find relief, but also not so good because if it pops that easily back into place, you can imagine it pops pretty easily out of place. So. My neighbors are still doing lovely. Anyway, today we're gonna go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> like, was, was this one that I found? Seven back tools that basically make my day-to-day -day life um, livable. Um, some of them I use. There's some that I use literally every day, but then others like at a time. But like since then my back has shifted. So now something else is more helpful. For a while it felt like Russian roulette every time I woke up because it was like a new body part hurt. But um, I'll stop talking. Shall we begin? Okay, so actually, first of all, here's my new desk chair. And this personally, I haven't, I got it like two days ago. So I don't, I'm not gonna put my stamp of approval on it yet. But for me, my issue is when I'm sitting in a desk chair, I like do a lot of like, I just sink down and I put all the pressure on my tailbone, which then pushes it out of place, which then pushes something else out of place. And then the next thing I know, there's a rib out. So I decided to find an alternative to my $1,200 chair that I bought. <laughs> this one was only a hundred, it was off Amazon. It kind of just like forces you to not, like you can't, you can't sink down because it, it's not physically possible. It forces you to just lean forward and I guess maybe that'll make me lean on the desk a little, but I don't think so. Yeah. Kind of just like puts you in your perfect posture and then you don't have to worry about it. Because otherwise I'll sit in my normal chair and it's like exhausting to just sit there because I don't realize that all of my muscles are working like twice as hard if something is out of place, that it's just sitting is hard. So here's my old desk chair. <laughs> Kidding. This is what I used to do on my desk chairs that I just like totally like curl up. Like what even is this? Anyway, product number two. I guess, oh, so I guess I have eight including the desk chair, but. Sir, it's not time to play. It's not time to play. <laughs> You're very cute though. Um, okay, so this is number two, I guess, called the Better Back. I should have zipped it up to begin with. It was on Shark Tank. I didn't watch the Shark Tank episode. Someone I know told me to get it and they were very passionate about it because it was kind of expensive. And I was like, are you sure? I'm like, that great? No, like, you won't regret it. It's amazing. And honestly, the only thing I regret is that I forgot that I had it for a while and it's just been sitting in the corner of my office. But it's easily portable because it zips into itself. <laughs> The better back. It's $50 on the website when I just looked, but also it's on sale right now from $59. Yes, so it's $10 off at the moment, but they have a lot of knockoffs on Amazon and they're like $22 instead of $59. So I'd recommend trying the knockoff. This doesn't feel like something that would be hard to recreate. But anyway, we unzip. In terms of where you would use this, honestly, anywhere. Um, I feel like I really need to bring it on an airplane the next time I go or on a road trip if I'm not the one driving. Um, you'll see why. Um, desk chair, even on the couch. I honestly should use it more, I don't. Unzip it and then you take the back part and then it has these knee pads 
<laughs> kind of looks like a parachute almost. And then you put the knee pads on your knees. Revolutionary. And then it also has this little clip in the middle. And then you just clip it to the other one so it makes your legs stay together. So it has these on your knees. And then it pulls this on your back. If you just like let your legs go and lean into it, it's a nice stretch. You can also use it for good posture, but it's a nice stretch as well. And it also makes it so it's like physically impossible. I mean, this isn't like good posture, but it's physically impossible to slouch. So yeah, especially for me, which it used to be my neck that was the issue. And then once we addressed the lower back issue, it fixed the neck and now we're still working on the lower back. But um, if you're like me and your lower back like curves a lot, this is nice because it prevents that from happening. Okay, shall we move on to the next one? I think all the next ones are just on the floor, so let me readjust. You just gonna hang out there? Good? Okay, sorry, distracted. Um, let's move on to this one, um, which is really dusty because I obviously don't use it that much, but I um, actually feel like it will be very beneficial for me right now. My back isn't feeling great. This one's just called like a back stretcher. I don't think it has a real name. It was, I I didn't look up this specific brand when I was looking up the price, but it's like anywhere from like $18 to $22. Not a big range. And it's adjustable. So you could put it on different like inclines, I guess. Do I do it this way? Yes. And then you put your back on the foam part in the middle. Oh, I should use this more too. Oh, this one's nice. Are you doing yoga? Um, this is great because it takes all the pressure off your mid and lower back. Oh. One thing I encourage you to do if your back is hurting, I suggest um, when you're lying down like anywhere, zone out as much as you can, like close your eyes and then just think about, does my spine feel straight right now? And many times, are you kidding? To just like think about if your back feels straight and then take a huge deep breath a diaphragmatic breath, by the way. I didn't know that that was a thing until I started seeing my chiropractor and wow, I don't think I'd ever taken a real deep breath in my entire life, so. That helped. But if you take a deep breath so it fills this part of your stomach and then I kind of hold it and wiggle around and stuff will move into place. Because I do have a tactic where I sit on the couch and I put cushions under my legs that I'll put up and then put them kind of up like this and I'll, um, and it looks like I'm giving birth. Um, and I'll stretch out my hips and it feels great, but this is another good one. 22 bucks. I feel like you don't realize how much your back like gets like compressed during the day and something like that really just opens you up. Next, let's go with the pelvic clock, which I'm not gonna lie, I do love and I use it when I'm like at a point of desperation where I can't figure out what's out of place. Another thing I learned about not that long ago was uh, pelvic tilt. Wow, <laughs> mine was wrong. Um, pelvic tilt is like, like, I don't know if my head's gonna be out of frame now, but it's like, I don't even know if it's anterior posterior or which is which, but mine, I feel like a lot of us really over exaggerate it and you flex these muscles too much and it just, it's all wrong and I started tucking it under. Oh my God. It is counterintuitive and feels really awkward, but even just stretching and doing that, highly recommend. I clearly also have a lot of issues with like my pelvic area. It's like my hips, pelvis, sacrum. So you put this literally like on your sacrum and then it's rounded on the bottom. You put 12 at the top. Oh, see this is great. Even just like being on, being on it in the right position is a huge, I like can't even talk because it feels so good. Just being on it is a relief, but then also it has exercises. So it says like, it's like go to 9 p.m. to 3 p.m. and you do pelvic tilts this way. But then you can also do from six to 12, six to 12, nine, three, nine, three. Oh, and that just cracked something. It's cracking it in more of a guided sense than it would be if you were just like, blindly like twisting around. That was great, highly recommend. Um, I will say though, this, for being just like a chunk of plastic, um, it is a little pricey. It was $79.99. I don't really know, I, there might be alternatives or you could find something that's similar, maybe. I don't know, but 
it works, it's helpful. <laughs> Something else that feels like it shouldn't be as expensive as it is, but is amazing. The So Right, which I haven't used in a little bit too because it's a little dusty. For a while I was using this almost every day and it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. You might wonder how this will work. It can work in a lot of ways, but mainly, so right, it's for your psoas muscles, which are like your hip flexors, which are like in like deep in here and it's very hard to stretch them in any way. This stretches them, but by like pushing in on them, you have to, and you have to be very delicate when you're doing it. <laughs> and there's a few, you could use it on a few different places too, but I'm like, you're like right inside your hips. And then you take some deep breaths. It kind of feels like it's not supposed to be there, but at the same time, it's like really a huge relief. And once you get off it, you feel like you're floating. Oh. Feels weird to do in front of you guys, but. I also found it, I mean, and it says you could use it for this too, but oh. your butt muscles, whatever these are. Oh, that's nice. It's like places you would foam roll. I don't think you can foam roll your psoas muscles actually, but oh my God. you know what, it hurts, but it feels good. That's the definition of this. It feels so wrong, but it feels so right. We'll move on. Next we have another very expensive hunk of plastic. <laughs> this one is, um, oh, so I guess it's on sale right now for $68.99, but it's usually $89.99. It's usually $90 for this green thing. This doesn't do anything. It's just plastic. I actually haven't used this one in a while, but I used to use it a lot when my like upper back was sore. And you basically, it feels kind of strange to do because it's just like, it, it doesn't have a spot for your spine, but uh, you put it just directly under your spine, kind of like, almost so it gets like your ribs and it opens up your chest a little. I think one thing it was marketed to treat was um, costochondritis, which is something about like the cartilage in your ribs where it meets your spine, that it gets inflamed or something. It's happened to me before and it is very, very painful. This I feel like would be maybe more beneficial if I knew exactly how to use it, or maybe I am not at the point where it is helpful for me. But um, I don't know, I'm curious if any of you have it and you think it works. Cause I feel like I used to like it. I've had so many back tools, it's hard to keep track. But this was one that I found on like a lot of lists as like a game changer. So if you have upper back problems, I would check it out at least. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Literally on the bottom it says for use on upper back. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, so it says for use on upper back only unless advised by a professional. So I guess you could use it on your lower back. It's made in New Zealand. Um, this is probably gonna be at the bottom of my list, but um, thought I'd tell you about it. <laughs> okay, we have two more and they are my holy grails. Yes, I obviously saved the best for last. Um, we'll do this because I'll have to reset the camera for the next one. This, you guys. <sighs> um, I feel like a lot of people make jokes that it looks like some kind of a sex toy. It's basically just two massage balls um, connected and then you put your spine in the middle. So I use this throughout the day. Um, every single day. I literally don't remember the last time I have not had it. I have two actually, well, had two. The other one was foam. This one's like rubber, so it's very durable. The one I had uh, stationed in my car though was foam and that wasn't as durable and that broke in half. So anyway, this is probably painful for some people, but for me, it feels great. Um, I usually start and you don't usually do it on your lower back that much. I would start like, it's like here up, it's where you would foam roll. Bring it to the top, right at the top of my neck. Take a deep breath. Oh, P.S. Whenever you're foam rolling and things crack, not all of it, but a lot of it is your ribs. And to crack your ribs, you do it on the exhale. And then I put my arms back and take a deep breath. Sometimes your shirt or sweatshirt gets in the way. That was nice. So I'll do that when my upper back feels really tight. Usually it's like after I've been walking a lot or sitting a lot, everything kind of locks up. So that loosens me a lot. But also I literally sit with it in my car to like, at the, and I put it at the bottom, like right down at my sacrum. And then I just lean against it. And you would think that would be uncomfortable, but it's really amazing. And then if I need to throughout the car ride, especially this rubber one, since it's like the texture of it, 
I'll like, and I don't know, I think this is like a me thing. I don't know if, I don't think everyone can do this, but I can like, kind of like hook it on to places, like just skin and drag it over. Oh. Oh. And crack things that way. So I'll even do that when I'm just standing up sometimes. I just like feel where my spine is and if it feels like it's like kind of off, like right now it's like a little lean to the left, then I just push, push it over. Oh. When I say this one's gotten me through some rough times and it's honestly probably the cheapest, I think it was 15 bucks. You can get fancy vibrating ones for $60, which actually I should try, but um, even just the basic one, highly recommend. Uh, the only thing besides this that I use every single day is my pull-up bar. How should we do this? I actually think one of you guys, I don't know if it was on YouTube or on Twitter, but someone recommended that I buy one and just hang on it every morning for like a minute. And I don't do that, but I hang on it for like 20 seconds. And when I first go down, it cracks everything in my neck and it loosens everything and it's amazing. I'll show you. Hopefully we'll get a good crack. So I'd say I probably do this like three times a day. It depends on how much my neck is bothering me because that's what it helps the most with. What ones do I actually? I think I switch off. These ones I used to use a lot and they're kind of gross now. But um, then I found out that if you use the outside ones that crack more stuff. So now I do that. I want you to be able to hear it, but I don't think you'll be able to. Okay. This is another one so similar to how the peanut does. It uh, will crack all of your ribs. So if you breathe in and then breathe out and then fall, like right as you breathe out, that's when you'll get the best crack. So I like get in position, breathe in. And then I almost like kind of wiggle it for a sec, but you can feel it like the pressure here. Yes, um, I just need to know if anyone else can do this. I don't know if it's gonna work right now, but does anyone else have like a lot of extra skin around their spine that they can pull and then and then I literally can take the skin. Oh, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work right now. But basically I pull the skin out and like there's a loud pop. My other technique is literally just using my knuckles and then taking, it's like the love handles basically, taking that and pushing it down and in. Oh, oh. I don't recommend any of that. I'm not a doctor or a chiropractor, nor do I know anything about spines or backs aside from just what it feels like when they're in pain. So um, take all this with a grain of salt. I think that's all eight of the tools that I have for today. Although I will say when I was checking the prices of these ones, I came across quite a few other ones that didn't exist a year ago. So um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll do another one because then it'll just give me an excuse to buy more. Let me know if you have any of these or if you know of any other ones that everyone should try in the comments. Let this be a nice little back pain community down there. Also, tell us your pain story. I feel like at a certain point after you've been in pain for a while, you assume just no one wants to hear about it ever. Um, I wanna hear, leave a comment. Anyway, um, that's it for today. Thanks again to Green Chef for sponsoring and helping me pay my rent. Oh, I forgot to tell you. The other reason that I have not been around is because I have been balls deep in research for my Epstein project. If you've been following me on Twitter, I don't know how much I've talked about it on YouTube, but if you follow me on Twitter, you're very aware that I've been working on this Epstein project for a while and finally I've decided it's gonna be, I feel like I shouldn't say this out loud, but it's uh, gonna be 10 episodes that are all gonna be about an hour. Uh, I've written pretty much all of them by now, but uh, it's a process. I'm in the middle of editing episode one and I'm hoping that will go up in the next like month or so. Um, and I'm still deciding how I'm gonna roll those out because I also feel like YouTube is gonna demonetize all of them and then potentially delete my channel. But um, I'll keep you posted. I thought about starting a new channel, thought about starting a Patreon. Would you pay for the Patreon? Here's a preview of episode one. So you can see that I've actually been working on something and haven't just been like doing nothing for months. It's safe to say the case surrounding disgraced billionaire Jeffrey Epstein is one of the most complicated and widespread scandals in modern history. Throughout this series, we'll be going over a number of aspects of the Epstein case, beginning with the unorthodox career path that landed him amongst some of the richest and most powerful individuals not only in the country, but in the world. Over the years, the quote-unquote billionaire has been described as everything from a financier to a hedge fund manager to a property developer to a teacher to a concert pianist to a spy. He also had a license to carry a concealed weapon, once claimed to have worked in the CIA, though later denied it. And of course, in addition to his elite social circle filled with scientists, politicians, and businessmen, Epstein also boasted his own private jet and also owned several properties all over the world. But before we go any further, let's go back in time to the early 2000s to recap how this all 
Salt first began, starting in Palm Beach, Florida in 2005. So as you might imagine, it's been quite time consuming, but um, I'm super excited to start actually getting them done. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I love you guys. And thank you for still being subscribed despite my uh, less than consistent upload schedule. I swear there's more coming. I have a lot of ideas. It's just executing them that's the hard part. Thank you.